in this video today i'm going to talk to you about the five things that you must do before selecting a forex broker it doesn't matter if you're new in the game it doesn't matter if you've stayed in the game for over six years these are the five tips that you need to look for before selecting a forex broker let's get it many forex traders don't look at the brokers that they are going for and that is why the first thing that you need to look up to is the regulatory compliance this is the first thing that you need to check when selecting a forex broker by checking the regulatory compliance you need to look at is their reputation up to par like in the united states a reputable forex broker must be a member of the national futures association the nfa it is a self-regulatory organization for the futures industry. It, is, it will also be registered with the Commodity Futures Trading Commission. This regulates the commodity futures and options market in the US. Well, many people will veer off to the flashy websites of brokers, but this does not guarantee that your broker is an NFA member or the broker is under the CFTC regulation. A broker will typically provide its NFA number in the About Us section. So scroll down, go to the About Us, check out if that broker is regulated. Now, what about those people who are outside the US? Each and every country in the world, they have their own regulations. Go into your own country, look, then go to that broker and look in the About Us section. Is my broker really regulated? If they are not, then don't put your money inside there. Remember, trading is about taking risks. And here, we're trying to cut off the, the amount of risks that you are taking. The second thing that you need to look at is the account features. The account features that your broker is giving out. Each Forex broker has different account offerings. And here are four areas to consider when comparing features among brokers. The first one is leverage and margin. For example, you can get a broker is giving out a leverage of around uh, 50 to 1. Mm -hmm. This means that with a $1,000 account, you can hold a position that is valued at around 50000 to the years. That is good. But then, if, underline this, if you're not a profitable trader, don't go for the highest leverages. They will clear you out. What you need to do is to take the lowest of all leverages. Don't go for 200 is to 1 leverage if you if you have never ever been on the real markets. Go for something like um, 10 is to 1, 20 is to 1, 30 is to 1, maximum of 40 is to 1, but don't go to 50 is to 1. It might look good. The amount of money that you can get might look good, but then I always tell people when you're, when you're entering inside a trade, don't look at how much money you're going to make. Look at how much money you're going to lose. Now, the other thing that you need to look at is commissions and spreads. Commissions and spreads. You can be making $1,000 per trade. But then, what is the commission? What are the spreads? I need to enter, um, I need to enter a trade when the market is here. What is the spread that this broker is giving me? Yeah. That is something that you need to look out for. Another thing is the initial deposit. Now, this comes this comes to those people who they don't have a lot of money to invest into, into trading. Let's say you only have um, you only have thirty dollars to invest um, in your trading account, but then you go for a trader who only accepts a minimum of a hundred dollars deposit. And you've already signed up. That is your time which you've wasted. So look at the initial deposit before you sign up. Another thing is how easy is it for you to deposit and withdraw your money? Because you expect yourself to make money. You don't expect yourself to deposit money and for that money to go away. So you need to look, okay, I'm depositing the money. And what if I want to withdraw the money? How long does it take me to withdraw the money? The other thing is currency pairs offered. Many brokers in the world, they will offer you a lot of currency pairs. But then, as a trader, you only need five currencies. Uh, you only need five pairs to trade. Look at that broker. 
does he offer the pairs that you want to trade? If he doesn't, get out of there. Hmm? A broker may offer a huge selection of forex pairs, but what is most important is that do they offer the pairs which interest you as a trader? And the fourth one is customer service. Forex trading occurs 24 hours a day. So a broker's customer support should be available at any time, no matter where you are in the world. If you're in Asia and the broker is in Africa, does he operate 24 hours when you're sleeping? He needs to be awake. He needs to be awake. When you're awake, he needs to be awake. A quick call to a broker can give you an idea of the type of customer service they provide and average wait time. So call those people up, call that number before you deposit your money there. Then the last thing is the trading platform. Now, most people will trade on MT4, MT5, and others will use TradingView. As for me, I'm very good at TradingView, but I'm actually work at MT4. Now, if I want to choose a, a broker, I'll choose a broker who is preferably on TradingView. The broker that you choose. Now, this one here is left to preference. There's some people who can choose trading view. There's some people who can choose MT4. There's some people who can choose MT5. The trading platform is the investor's portal to the markets. As such, traders should make sure a broker's platform and software comes with the technical and fundamental analysis tools that they need, and that trades can be entered and exited with ease. The last point is especially important, a well-designed trading platform will have clear buy and sell buttons and some even have a panic button that closes all open positions. A poorly designed interface on the other hand could lead to costly order entry mistakes. And other considerations you can, you can go for is do they have backtesting? Um, do they offer free demo accounts? But then, that, that was all. Those are the five things that you need to look out for. Remember, trading is a risk. Each and every trade that you, that you take is a risk. Don't go into a trade looking for how much money you can make. Look for how much money you can lose. Accept your risk. You don't want to enter into a trade with a lot of emotions. You want to make 5,000, but you're risking 2,000. And you know that this 2,000 is your whole account. Risk $500? You're okay with that? I always tell people, always risk 2% of your account. Now, that was it for today. I pray that all of us are going to enter to the markets with our heads and not with our hearts, not with our emotions. Don't be an emotional trader. If you fail, go back to the drawing board, look at where you went wrong, then go back and do it. That was all. See you in the next time. Remember, hit the subscribe button also.